now that we have finished practicing simplifying expressions with exponents by creating like bases and recalling the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule, we're now going to focus on how to solve exponential equations and inequalities. The bottom line is there are three things you need to look for. First is you want to make sure you rewrite both sides of the equations with like bases if possible, when needed even. Then set the exponents equal to each other once you have the same base. And we'll see why we can do this in one of the examples. Then solve for the variable. The first two steps are the key. And so if I look at these examples, I have 3 to the x equals 3 to the 7. I mean, think about it. You have 3 to some power is equal to 3 to the 7th power. Well, you know x has to be 7. The left side has to look just like the right side. I know that x is 7. They already have the same base. And if they have the same base, what you can do is think of it like crossing out the base and look at the rest of the equation. x equals 7. There's my answer. And so if I look at this one, I have 5 to the x plus 2 equals 5 to the 9th. I have the same base. I can kind of imagine them being crossed out. And so really I'm left with x plus 2 equals 9. Well, solve it. You would subtract 2 from both sides to get x equals 7. And so when you have a like base, it's very simple. You just ignore it and deal with the exponents with the equation. But if we look at the next two problems, we don't have like bases. 64 equals 2 to the 3n plus 1 power. So when I don't have a like base, I have to, first thing I need to do is I need to create my like bases. And so 2 to the 6th power is 64. So I have 2 to the 6th power equals 2 to the 3n plus 1 power. And now that I have the like base, I can go to the next step. The bases are the same, so I can cross them out and just deal with the exponents. 6 equals 3n plus 1. And so what would I do? I would subtract 1 to get 3n equals 5, and then divide by 3 and get n equals 5 thirds. And there's your answer. So the bottom line is if you don't have like bases, create them. Don't have like bases. 3 to the 4th, 27 to the n minus 1, create them. So 3 is nicer than 27. It's smaller. I mean, I'd rather use that one. So let's keep the 3. And I know that 27 is 3 cubed. Now here's the trick. Your exponent here on the outside is an expression. So when you take 27 and change it to 3 cubed, you're going to have to put it inside of a parenthesis because this expression m minus 1 is going to have to be get distributed to that exponent. So really the problem says 3 to the 4th equals 3 distribute to the 3m minus 3 power. Now that you have the same base, 3 and 3, you can cross them out and just deal with the exponents. 4 equals 3m minus 3. You would add 3 and get 7 equals 3m. You would divide by 3 and get m equals 7 thirds. So when you create like bases, once you do that, make sure none of the properties of exponents apply. They do take care of it. And then set the exponents equal and ignore the bases. So let's look at a couple other examples. The difference between these two is that you see they are inequalities. It does not matter. You're going to treat it the same. What you need to figure out is, do I want to keep a certain base? Do I want to get rid of a certain base? And if I look at this one, I don't want to keep 216. That's, that's a large base. Let's not keep it. Now, if I look at 6, I can't break 6 down anymore. You know, I can't break this to 2 to a certain power or 3 to a certain power or 4 or 5. And so I have to leave this alone. And so what that does is that tells me 
what I need to create for this base. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just look on the side. One over, I know six is the base I need. So I need to figure out six to what power is 216, and that's six cubed. Then what we need to remember is if you have one over a base to a power, it's the same as having the negative exponent. So it's really six to the negative third power. So I have six to the two n minus one is really greater than six to the negative third power. And since I have the same base, I can ignore them. And all I'm left with is the inequality two n minus one is greater than negative three. You would add one and get two n is greater than negative two and divide by two and get n is greater than negative one. So even though it's an inequality, it doesn't change the steps that were shown before. So in the examples we've looked at now that deals with creating like bases, we've only had to deal with one. But if I look here, 16 and 32, 32 is not a power of 16. So I can't change this to a base of 16. So I, what I'll do is I always go for the smaller number. I try and figure out 16 is what to certain powers. Well, I know 16, let's just write it off the side so you guys can see it. I know 16 is 4 squared. Is 32 then a power of 4? No. 4 to no power is 32, so we can't use 4. So then I look again. Well, I know 16 is 2 to the 4th power. And so I'll put it in parentheses and get 2n plus 1. And so what I'm going to check is, hey, is 32 2 to some power? And well, double 16, you get 32, so 2 to the 5th power. And so really, this is 1 over 2 to the 5th power, which means it's really 2 to the negative 5th power, since it's 1 over that. Remember, you're going to have to distribute. You're going to have to apply your power rule. 4 times 2n is 8n. So you have 2 to the 8n plus 4 is less than or equal to 2 to the negative 5th. And so what I'm going to do is I have the same base now. I created them. I can ignore it, and I can deal with just the exponents. I have 8n plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 5. So I would subtract 4 and get 8n is less than or equal to negative 9. Divide by 8n is less than or equal to negative 9 eighths. And that is my final answer. So there will be times where you're going to have to change both bases to create like terms. And you have to be careful with that. And what you do is choose the smaller base and start looking at what is that the power of. So 16 is 4 squared. But so I looked over here, 32 is not 4 to some power, so I can't use that. So I go back, 16 is 2 to the 4th, so 32 is 2 to the 5th, and so I can use a base of 2, so sometimes you're going to have to change both. And so let's look at the last example, 1 over 25 to the 2n power equals 5 to the n minus 5 power. Right off the bat, I should see that 1 over 25 is really 1 over 5 squared, which means 5 to the negative second power. So I have 5 to the negative second power being raised to the 2n power. So put it in a parentheses. That equals 5 to an n minus 5 power. I would apply my power rule. Negative 2 and 2n is negative 4n. So I get 5 to the negative 4n power equals 5 to the n minus 5 power. Since I have the same base, I can ignore them and just deal with the exponents. Negative 4n equals n minus 5. So subtract n, you get negative 5n equals negative 5. n equals 1 when you divide both sides by negative 5. And so dealing with solving exponential equations and solving exponential inequalities, what you need to keep in mind is these three things. Rewrite both sides of the equation with like bases if possible, if needed. Sometimes you have to do both sides. Sometimes it may just be one. Once you do that and apply the properties of exponents to simplify, then you just set your exponents equal and solve from there.